Hello. Do you dare face down a bevy of rivals in a race to claim the crown of command for yourself? Or are you just a toad flopping around the edge of the map and getting nowhere? Sometimes it's probably both. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today I'm adventuring through the history of Talisman. Talisman is a fantasy board game published by Games Workshop in 1983. There have been four editions of the game over the years and a whole host of supplements and expansions. Because of the scale of Talisman content and the fact that I've been a little bit ill recently, unfortunately I've not been able to put it all into a single video. So this is just part one of our journey around the board of Talisman. We're going to cover editions one and two and then part two will follow covering the rest of the supplements and stuff that was released later on. I hope that you enjoy this first part. If you do, feel free to leave a like and let's get started. The game sees two to six players embark on a journey around a themed map, encountering all manner of fantastic monsters, spells, curses, treasures, boons and beasts, hoping to raise their strength and seek out the fabled crown of command. The crown is situated in the centre of the board, but to get to it, you must move from the outermost region of the map, over the Storm River, to the middle region, before finding a magical talisman that will protect you as you pass through the portal of power into the central region of the board, where you will step into the plane of peril, and every other player is trying to do exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. Talisman is every bit the frantic race it sounds like, and random movement coupled with random encounters, some of which are absolutely brutal, can give the game a bit of a fantasy snakes and ladders feel, but the cruel hand of randomness is fair in its persecution of every player, and making the most of your advantage before succumbing to your disadvantage is what makes the game worth playing. And people have been playing it in droves for 40 years, so let's see the journey that this classic board game has been on. The game was invented by author Robert Bob Harris, whilst he was a postgrad student at St Andrews. Harris recounts the story of how he came up with Talisman on the website he shares with his wife, fellow author Deborah Harris, which I'll link to below. It's a wonderful, charming read. Back in their student days, Debbie had suggested that the group of friends play a game she was familiar with from back home in Florida, Dungeons and Dragons and it was a hit. The group spent an entire weekend rolling up characters and battling monsters. Harris loved the game, but he felt like he wanted more of the dungeons and less of the character creation, something that had been repeatedly necessary because the characters kept dying again and again. From this, the idea was born to create a way to play adventure after adventure with all the fun stuff and none of the fiddly bits. Harris began work, drawing out all of the cards and components in crude but vivid pencil diagrams, including the triangular talisman itself and the legendary three region game board. At the time, the game's working title was Necromancer, and through extensive playtests with that same group of friends, Harris was able to refine the rules. He also discovered that one of the best things about the game experience was hoping your opponents would get turned into toads, eliciting constant chance of toad, toad, toad since day one. The awesome fan site Talisman Island has a 30th anniversary interview with Bob Harris himself where he talks about the mechanisms and game rules that inspired Necromancer and later Talisman. They were actually from a game he invented in school called Rectocracy, and in that game players would take on the role of teachers who were trying to accumulate prestige points by moving around the outer ring of the board. They would eventually become headmasters in the middle ring, and then get to the office of the head principal, the rector, in the central square. And that was what they were trying to achieve, to become the rector of the school. This game, <laughs> I really love it, in the sense that it's just such an obscure and unusual topic for a board game, but you can absolutely understand why that would appeal to kids in school. And then also, there's a romantic notion that this thing that was created by a young kid who was just trying to have fun with his friends would actually go on to be the basis of something that was a major success around the world. I just love that idea that the stuff that we play as kids can inform and influence the world that we live in today. 
After reaching out to a broad range of publishers, Harris ended up in touch with Games Workshop, and following some discussion with Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston, the deal was done. The rules were tweaked, and the name was changed from Necromancer to Talisman. Talisman was launched at Games Day 1983, where, according to this advert, you could find Ego Central, which I think is just a funny name, but was actually a register of gaming advocates. As Harris jokes on his site, no one can remember the name of the other game that GW launched that same Games Day, one that was designed by none other than Andrew Lloyd Webber. However, I can remember it because I bought a copy. It's called Calamity. It has the driest looking board and components I have ever seen. And if you want to see me playing around with it, you can click here. Whilst Lloyd Webber's Monopoly knockoff never got off the ground, Harris's Talisman was an instant hit. One of the great strengths of Talisman has always been the range of characters that you can play. To the exact point that Bob Harris made about creating a D&D &D with no fuss, one that you can just play again and again and you don't have to roll up new characters or build new scenarios, there are 14 characters in the game box to start with. You can play the traditional stuff like a dwarf or an elf, but there are also less common archetypes as well, like a prophetess or a sorceress or a troll even. It's a really fun way to just introduce good guys and bad guys and all the way in between guys. A second edition was quickly commissioned by GW and this time it would be in full colour. Not much else was changed for this 1985 release, though the board went from being a multiple panel foldout to a four part jigsaw board, all with the same art. And the box did get a complete revamp. This would be the first appearance of the now famous Talisman logo, an image of the protective talisman itself based on that original talisman card drawn by Bob Harris during his pencil and paper playtest version. The first edition box had used cover art by the incomparable GW master Gary Chalk, giving the game an almost folkloric feel. And if you ask me, it's a little reminiscent of the 1977 Dungeons and Dragons basic rules book cover by David C. Sutherland III. The chalk cover, though, was replaced with an arguably more cinematic and classical piece by Chris Archelios that retains the dragon and warrior, but takes the action from a forest glade and places it high atop a dangerous castle pathway. There had been no expansions for the first edition of Talisman, but that oversight would seemingly be corrected tenfold for the second edition. There would be so many expansions for this one. The first was simply known as the Talisman Expansion Set. Like the base game, this was designed by Bob Harris and would see release a year after second edition hit shelves. The expansion set did exactly what it said on the box. It expanded the core content of the game by adding a load of new characters and cards. There were 14 new characters in this box, including the Pilgrim, the Satyr, the Necromancer and the Amazon. There were also six new spells and 36 new adventure cards. 1986 also saw an advertising push for the second edition of Talisman in the French market via the French language hobby magazine Les Héros Citadel. During the 80s, the French company Agmat acted as an agent for Citadel Miniatures in France, and eventually they would actually become known as Citadel France, and their catalogue magazine was Les Héros Citadel. It included a host of catalogue pages advertising new Citadel minis, as well as features about Games Workshop games like Warhammer and even D&D. In the second issue, there is a feature on the recent arrivals to the Warhammer world, Les Hommes du Chaos, or Chaos Ratmen, or Skaven. And if you want to hear more about the origins of those wonderful Hommes du Rat, then look out for my History of the Skaven video coming soon. I am really excited about this one because I love those little ratty guys. As well as all that good stuff, there is of course an article about Talisman, with a little tie-in to these new Ratmen. Harris wrote some new character cards for the game, a Skaven and a Herald. And in issue 4, Harris provided some further new spells and adventure cards, like the Skaven Flamethrower and the Roi Crapeau, the Toad King. Back in the UK, the expansions did not stop coming. In 1986, a second box set was released, put together by members of the GW design team. Edward Campbell, Charles Johnson, Alan Merritt and Ali Morrison produced Talisman The Adventure. This set came with more than 60 new cards, introducing new spells like the Finger of Death and the Gust of Wind. Kind of feels like those are not equally impressive spells though. 
And there were new characters like the Orc, the Centaur, the Samurai and the Ninja. The box also included new character sheets to track progress through the game and a load of other new cards for use across the game as well. Perhaps most intriguingly, there were five alternative endings in this set as well, meaning that instead of just racing for the Crown of Command, players could instead be looking for Pandora's box, facing down the Demon King or even trying not to step in the horrible Black Void. Bob Harris's final complete expansion for Talisman would be released the following year, 1987's Talisman Dungeon, and it would introduce something new that evolved the game in a wild and wonderful new way. This expansion had a new game board. This new location, the titular dungeon, is reached via doors added to the main Talisman board. And whilst in it, the players can encounter a range of new cards that might bring bronze dragons or hellhounds into the game. New characters added in this set included the Dark Elf, the Highlander and the Swashbuckler. Time ticked on and five years after the release of the original game, a new expansion would hit the shelves. 1988's Talisman Timescape was designed by Frank Bork, a Canadian Talisman fan and game designer, and was based around the concept of a new Timescape board accessible via warp gates, horrible black voids and other magical means. The eight characters included in this set drew heavily on other GW properties, primarily 40k, with a Space Marine, Astropath and Cyborg amongst the group, as well as the famous Chainsaw Warrior himself. In 1989, a new realm would open up to Talisman players, a lot less science fictional than Timescape's Warp, but no less fantastic than previous expansions, this would be Talisman City. The city region replaced the city space on the traditional board and brought with it a range of familiar urban locales like the Magic Shop, the Town Square and the Anarchist's Guild. A particularly fun rule is that as a fine bastion of capitalism, the city will not tolerate poor people. If you don't have any gold, then you can be arrested by the Town Watch at any moment. New characters for this expansion were few in number, but did include a mighty Minotaur and an also mighty Valkyrie, as well as the addition of four master levels for characters, careers that allow you to improve your abilities like becoming a King's Champion or a Master Thief. The sixth and final complete expansion for Talisman 2nd Edition would be released in 1992, Talisman Dragons. With the Dragon King and Dragon Cult unleashing a deluge of dangerous dragons across the land, this set is draconic in every way imaginable. Across 80 plus new cards, there are new dragon themed monsters, encounters and treasures. Even the new character options follow that theme with a questing knight, a dragon slayer, a dragon rider and a dragon priest. The cover art for this set was by David Gallagher, and would later be reused at least once on the Warhammer Chronicles of War Battle Reports compilation. Both Talisman City and Talisman Dragons were designed by Evan Friedman and Paul Morrow. Around 1985, the year that the second edition of the game was first released, a range of Talisman miniatures were produced by Citadel that were designed to represent your character on the game board. The first release was a box set, sculpted by Trish Morrison and based on the original character art from Chalk and Achilleos. It included the 14 characters from the base game. The Assassin, Druid, Dwarf, Elf, Ghoul, Minstrel, Monk, Priest, Prophetess, Sorceress, Thief, Troll, Warrior and Wizard. Subsequent sets were released alongside each expansion for the game and the miniatures were released in multi-pack blisters and several were also made available individually as well. Perhaps the most important thing about this range was the toads. Sure, there's a plain old beautiful vanilla toad, but there's also a warrior toad wearing a helmet, a ranger toad wearing a floppy hat, a wizard toad with a feather and spell book, and yes, a pirate toad. Incredible. To further support the second edition of the game, GW's monthly magazine White Dwarf ran a number of articles and features, though before that there was their lukewarm review of Talisman, which scored the game only 6 out of 10. Apparently they felt it could drag on a bit. 1985's White Dwarf issue 72 included an article by Alistair Morrison that offered up a range of new characters and cards like the Samurai character, Adventure cards, Curfew and Closed Shop and Spell cards, Transmute and Bolster. Some of these cards would find their way into later Talisman releases, such as the Samurai ending up in the Talisman The Adventure box, and the Resurrection spell was translated for one of those French Le Hero Citadel articles. In White Dwarf 115, published in July 1989, there were a selection of new master level character careers to whet appetites for the forthcoming Talisman City expansion. 
The art for Talisman's first and second editions was largely produced by Gary Chalk, the illustrator responsible for some of the best art in HeroQuest as well as lots of other timeless work for Games Workshop. Chalk's art makes every character, board square and card in the box come alive. There is a reason they got to call this the Magical Quest game and I would argue that much of that magic flows from Gary Chalk's pen. Apparently, even though he produced all of this wonderful art for Talisman at quite a pace, unfortunately Gary Chalk wasn't offered the permanent contract at Games Workshop that he was hoping for. Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson did offer him a 1% royalty if he would come and illustrate the fighting fantasy books they were producing, but instead of that, he turned it down and left the company with Joe Diva, where they would go on to create Lone Wolf instead. But that is another story. In Poland, Talisman was translated and released by the game's company Sfera, under the name, forgive my pronunciation, Magia i Mex, or Magic and the Sword. Sfera held the license for a range of Games Workshop games, releasing Polish language versions of Blood Bowl and Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, amongst others. For their Polish edition of Talisman, Sfera produced a unique supplement direct to the Polish market, without the involvement of Games Workshop. This expansion was called Jaskinia, or The Cave, and is seemingly a difficult set with a new board and tough new enemies. However, it seems that Games Workshop were not best pleased about the development and release of an expansion for their game without their knowledge, and as a result, the license for Sfera to publish GW games in general, and Talisman in particular, was revoked. In 1993, Sfera would overcome this setback by releasing a brand new game of their own, Magixni Miex just Magic Sword this time. This inverted the classic talisman board and saw similar talisman-like characters and encounters take place as players made their way from the starting point in the center to the Fortress of the Beast on the Outer Rim. <coughs> to go along with the physical release of Talisman 2nd Edition back in 1985, there was also a magical 8-bit edition as well. Talisman, the magical quest game, was released on ZX Spectrum. This video game promised over 50 beautiful graphic locations. It was written by someone called Slug, apparently the team responsible for other GW video game adaptations like Battle Cars. It wouldn't be that long lasting, and I've never played it, I don't know if it was released on other platforms, but it looks pretty faithful, and it is multiplayer and solo as well. Whilst Bob Harris would remain an interested party throughout Talisman 2nd Edition, Harris would be bought out of the game entirely. As he describes on his website, a lot of games now had huge plastic pieces as their selling point rather than lots of beautifully illustrated cards. We had discussions about expanding Talisman into a series of separate games, each with lots of plastic bits, but nothing came of this. In the end, a large, glossy third edition was published. By the time this version had run its course, the chaps at GW were a completely different bunch from those I had dealt with at the beginning. In the end, they offered me a generous sum of money to buy out my interest in the game, in the life of every creative individual, there comes a time to take the money and run. So, I did. And that, friends, is unfortunately where we're going to have to take a break and run as well. In part two, we'll be looking at that plastic stuffed third edition that Bob Harris was so worried about, and seeing if it does add a new dimension to the game of Talisman. And we'll investigate the FFG fourth edition, a version that has so many expansions you could use them to build a raft and sail over the Storm River. I hope that you've enjoyed this first part of the history of Talisman. If you have, please feel free to leave a like, to leave a comment or a super thanks if you're into that sort of thing. And I am always welcoming new followers here on YouTube and over at Twitter and Instagram as well. I'm at Jordan Sorcery on all of them. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Jordan and this is Jordan Sorcery. Toad, 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 come on, toad, 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 join in, toad, toad, toad. <laughs> I just, I just really, I'd love to know how many of you actually did start chanting. <laughs>